Good morning, everyone. I am excited to share a new project with you today. This project was inspired by a box in the January to June 2021 catalog. And I want to show you, this is the picture right out of the catalog that inspired me. So here is this cute little treat box. And these are actually called the Love You Always Treat Boxes. And they are wonderful. I have them here. Let me just, I have them here. They come in this, this big box. Um, and they are food safe and double walled. And I love them, but I also wanted to be able to make them from scratch. So I want to give you two options. Um, this is an option that's the easy button option. You can buy them out of the catalog. Um, you, all you have to do is fold and assemble them, and I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I'm also going to show you how to make my version using a scoring board and um, basically just a scoring board and making some cuts and gluing them together. Um, they are not quite the same. I'll try and go over the differences. Um, the Love You Always Treat boxes, they are food safe. The um, box, not the, um, well, let me just double check. I'm, I'm, I'm going to my box. So here, here it is folded together. I haven't decorated this one, just so you can see, this is what it's gonna look like. This is the one that is out of the catalog, the Love You Always Treat boxes. So um, this side, the um, outside of the cover is kind of a, um, uh, a rough side so you can stamp on it. But the inside, this part is covered in a wax food safe coating. And same with the inside of this. So say you want to bake something and put this in here or you have food that's going to touch directly on here this is the best option because it is food safe this is also a really strong box because my box will be single walled um, both the boxes are um, the same size so here is my box made in white it's it's single walled it fits just as snugly i really worked hard with the measurements so it would be a similar fit and everything so if you see them side by side they are let me move them into light they are basically the same except for double walled and food safe my box my box here can also be made in whatever cardstock colors you want so that's another good thing and also, if these boxes, the Love You Always Treat boxes, retire, then you have an option to make them past um, that time. So that is why I designed them, to give you more options. I do love these ones in the catalog because they are food safe and you can put baked goods in them. So that's kind of a, a cool thing. And they're, they're faster because you just fold them together. So why don't we get started and if you have any questions along the way I will try and answer them and I'll I'll go back after my videos over and I will um, go through the comments and make sure that I catch everything I'm really bad about getting distracted and doing that during so I hope you don't mind if I uh, reserve those for the end of the video okay I'm gonna switch over to my other camera oh before I do that I should remind you, I have a cool handy dandy project sheet that I will be sharing with my email list subscribers. It comes out on Saturday. So tomorrow, um, if you're subscribed to my email list, you will get that project sheet in your uh, email inbox. So to become a subscriber, it's completely free. Um, all you need to do is go down in the description of my video and click on the little link that says um, where to subscribe and just fill in your information and then you'll be on my email list and you'll be able to get these um, project sheets. Um, all right, let me go ahead and switch my camera. Okay. So here are my little boxes. I, um, uh, the box that I showed you um, in the um, video at the beginning, 
um, is very, very similar to this box right here. But I made a few changes. I didn't really like the, the greeting up there. I wanted that to kind of be blank. But I thought this is such a great opportunity on a box to put stuff on the side. And I want to just take uh, a little look. You know what's really cool is this crocodile tail is over onto the back of the box. So it really is very cute once it's stamped, right? Um, for this one, I don't have anything on this side, but I decided to add a little kangaroo down here. So we've kind of got that same effect um, on the slider box. You'll also notice, because these are the boxes that I made, I could change the color up. So this one is um, Pool Party. Um, the inside is a pool party. So you can um, have fun with your color selection because um, if you're making them from scratch, you can um, kind of have fun. Um, so I used O Snap on this box. It does not have a matching die set, but it is so, so cute. If you love cute animal stamp sets, this one is definitely a must have. And then also the Kangaroo and Company um, stamp set. I used that one earlier this week. It comes with a matching die set um, in a bundle. So if you purchase these two together, you can save 10%. So I just wanted to mention those two things that I use to decorate. Okay, let's set these aside and let's take a look at how to assemble this box. So. They come in two pieces. So this is your slider cover. And then this, come on out. It's stuck on the plastic here. Here, let me pull one out. They, they come really packaged well. Um, Love You Always Treat box. Um, they're, um, they have this backing so they won't bend in, in transit. So that's good. They're all snug and everything in there. So um, this cover piece, don't fold it if you're gonna stamp on it because it's so much easier to stamp on it when it's flat. So let me just show you. Let's say we were gonna decorate this up with a crocodile. And two different ways to decorate when you are um, uh, doing the kangaroo versus the crocodile. With the crocodile, you want the tail on this back piece. So you're gonna have the bigger segment. I don't know if you can see that. The bigger segment is facing you. And then the skinny segment is towards the back because the tail is gonna wrap around. So I'm just um, inking up my crocodile with Memento ink. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'm going to kind of align this here. I'm kind of keeping it centered from side to side and just making sure that um, the bottom of my crocodile mouth is kind of even with, um, with the edge of my box. And I'm just giving it a good press down and then I'll lift it off and see how nicely that stamps. So when I fold this now, the tail is going to wrap to the back and then this piece right here will be the front piece and I can add a banner to that afterwards. Then you can just go and fill in things like um, we have the little fishes or the fish. Is fishes a word? You can just go ahead and stamp them right down there in the mouth of the crocodile. You might not want to do that. The original sample has goldfish in the box, which I think is really, really cute because you have the goldfish here. And I, I think that's adorable. The other thing with this box, let me just tuck this away and grab my, where did it go? Pool party ink pad. And just a little tip for doing this. So if you want to stamp some waves in here, you can go ahead and do this. When you're doing it on the back here, this is the back of the box is going to be up like this. So I turn this and then if I want to stamp a few waves right here, I kind of just do them the other direction. So you have to kind of keep that in mind. And I'm just going to go off a little bit. Some of them are stamped off and some of them are stamped on. So. That is what I would do for that. Okay. So 
just something I noticed here because I hadn't stamped on here real quick. Um, I've noticed that my cover is smudging just a wee bit. So um, I just stamped this. So I would maybe wait a little bit before I handled it and did more stamping because um, it might just need a little time to dry. This is a different surface than our regular cardstock. So um, also I just inked my ink pad so it's super, super inky. Um, so if you wanna just let that sit a little bit before you go on and handle it or just be very cognizant that um, um, that it might smudge. And I'm not sure if it's because I inked my ink pad or because the surface is a little different. The other thing you can do is if you have a heat tool, just bring this into my picture. If you have a heat tool, if you're um, impatient, um, heat setting your ink is also like a good option for like quick setting and making sure if you are worried about handling things. Most of the time, if you just let it wait and dry, then things will be good. Okay, so that is the cover for that piece. And then of course I colored it with Stampin' Blends and I'm gonna show you how to do that on my box. Let me just stick this aside. Okay, so now let's take a look at um, this thing and how to fold it together. You can grab a bone folder if you want to and you're gonna fold this inwards along the score lines we're making it's a double walled box okay so that's why there's a lot of flaps to this box and um, the coating is nice because um, if you have something that has moisture in it like say you're putting in maybe gummy worms or say it's a baked good it's going to keep everything um, safe and um, it's also a very snug box, so there won't be as much air circulation either. So um, to bring this in together, we're going to, we're gonna, this is the lid, okay, this little piece right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring these pieces in. Let me bend this back for a second. And we're gonna bring this in, the sides in, we're going to fold down and it actually folds the opposite direction Let me open this up a bit so you can see so you can see there's um my little tab bends back down at the bottom of the box i don't know if you can i'm trying to get the light so it will hit it at the right spot okay i'm not getting a good um light but the tab is bent back down at the bottom so these two side tabs come in see this little tab it should be bent this direction and then you're going to come in like this and then oh you know what <laughs> there is no lid to this box that's every time I do this box I'm like there is no lid make sure when you're folding them down all the tabs come down first so these little tabs right here with the angles on them they come down first and then this one right here that also has an angle tab, that one also comes down. Okay, that one should be the, the third one down. And then this one comes down and you can kind of see it has a little bit of um, a little tiny piece that sticks out a little bit. Once you push that down, it's going to lock into place into this um, tab that you put down here. So that is the slider box. Then there's the cover um, and you just, let me grab the cover that I did. Here, you just bend this back in the opposite direction like this. And then you can slide this in like that. So it's quite a snug fit, um, but you want that so that your whatever you're putting inside here will stay fresh. Okay, that is the Love You Always treat boxes. Now let me show you how to make them from scratch. Okay, so we're gonna start off by making the box base. And I did mine in Pool Party. And you're going to need your Simply Scored scoring board. And this one is fairly simple. 
you're going to start off with a piece of cardstock that is seven and one eighth inches by five and three quarter inches. And then you're going to score at the one and a half inch mark on all four sides. Very easy. Okay. And that will create our box space. Our box space is not double walled, so it's very simple. Now, I like to cut my boxes on my Simply Scored because it makes for a really nice cut. So I just go ahead, I want to cut on the short ends. So on the short sides, I'm going to cut up along the score line just till I meet the first score intersection. So let me show you. So I'm lining this up at on my trimmer here, it's kind of right on this edge, right when it switches to the darker color. Um, but basically, I just look at the score groove and I line it up on that score groove. And then I keep this arm up and I move it into place right onto this score line that comes across here. And I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna lift this up with my finger bring it down to my other score intersection and cut down. Okay, so basically I have just cut up along the score line in both places. If you don't like to do that, if that's too complicated, the other way to do it is just use scissors. So you can just cut along that score line just until you meet that first score intersection right there. Okay, and you're gonna do that on both of the short ends of your box. Okay, so like that. And then we're gonna fold this piece on the, along the score lines. I'm gonna use my bone folder as a little helper just to help crease those folds. So when these ends come in together, sometimes there's a little bit of, um, it sticks out a little bit. So if you want to, you can angle cut along your score lines or along the edge of your tabs to create kind of an angled piece. A lot of box manufacturers do that. Like if you've ever just assembled a box and you look at the tabs you can just angle cut them, but you don't have to if you don't want to. This is not, this is kind of an optional step. So you can angle cut those, get rid of those. And then we're gonna take some Tombow glue and we will put it on each of the four corner tabs. Come on, oops, get rid of that blob. And, um, if you're a little worried about getting glue all over the place, um, do your tabs one at a time, not like me. I'm gonna put glue on all of the tabs, the four corner tabs at the same time. And then I'm just gonna be really careful and try not to get my fingers in that glue, okay? So then I'll just bring in each of the corners and just kind of press down. Make sure you line up that score line right with the edge right there. You can press down on a surface if you want. And then let's do the other side. Fold it in, fold it in, and then bring them together. Make sure you are aligned and then press down. And there is the bottom of your box. So that is step one. Now let's create a cover for the box. So for the cover, 
I'm going to have, I'm going to use my trimmer and I just wanted to show you something because this might be the only step that trips you up a bit and it's just because it's a measurement and some people have difficulty with measuring our cutting on the 16th. So I just wanted to show you how I do that. Let me make sure I have the right piece. Okay, I've already cut my piece of cardstock to the four and one eighths inch mark. So right now this piece measures four and one eighths by 11, okay? But I need to make it a little shorter. So I'm gonna take the long side. I'm gonna open up my paper trimmer just so I can show you how I do this. And I'm gonna put the long side up at the top. This length needs to be 10 and 5 sixteenths. Don't let that trip you up. It's actually quite easy. So find the 10 and a quarter inch mark on your ruler. Okay, so that would be right here for me. So I'm going to lay it on the 10 and a quarter inch mark. And then I'm going to go one tick more. And now I'm at the mark between 10 and a quarter and 10 and 3 eighths. That little line in between is the 10 and 5 16 inch mark. So one tick past 10 and a quarter and one tick below 10 and 3 eighths. It's the middle mark in between there. And that is where I'm going to cut my cardstock. All right, so now let me show you on a regular ruler. Some people do get tripped up by this. And I know I could have made these whole measurements, but then the box would not have been as snug. So I just want to show you on my ruler right here. Let me hold it up to the camera so I can show you a little closer. So because of the angles, it's not going to be 100%, but let's... See if I can line this up as close as possible. I'm looking at my camera as I'm showing you just so I can see. So um, sometimes when I'm holding something up because of the camera angle, so I don't know if you can tell or not, but this is just one tick past the 10 and a quarter inch mark in length, okay? In between the 10 and a quarter and 10 and 3 eighths inch mark. Okay, and then this width here is four and one eighths. All right, I know I spent a lot of time explaining that, but um, I know 16th inch marks can be a little harder for some people. Okay, so now we'll take this long side and lay it at the top of your Simply Scored. And now we're going to do two score marks. We're gonna do four and three eighths inches and eight and three quarter inches. Then I'm going to turn my piece around so it's on the other long side. So 180 degrees, turn it around, and I'm going to repeat those same measurements. Four and three eighths and eight and three quarters, okay? So that is all the scoring that you need to do. So the hardest part was really getting that one measurement in the right place. So the cool thing about this cover that I created is it's um, symmetrical. So you can stamp on either end. Um, one of these tabs is going to be covered in glue and then it's gonna overlap on the other side. Can I show you my score lines or not this morning? The light, let's see if I can get some better light on here and see if I can get some shadows working for you. Let's see if I can get, uh, it's, it's not as good as it needs to be, but um, there's a skinny score segment, a larger one, skinny, large, skinny, okay? So when we're stamping this, maybe I can show you better on this kangaroo one I already stamped because the lines are already folded. So for the kangaroo one, I'm going to go right to the bottom. My kangaroo gets kind of stamped a little bit below this first score line, okay? And then this will become the sides. This is how it's gonna to come together like that. For the crocodile one, 
I'm going to ignore the bottom segment and I'm going to stamp my crocodile mainly on this bigger segment here. So let me show you how that works. Let me ink this guy up again. Tap, tap, tap. Okay. And I'm going to stamp him Again, just like I did the other one, but this time my piece is completely flat. I can do all my work before I assemble. So there is my crocodile, and I can go ahead and add my little fish. Inside the mouth, I'm trying to decide, okay, this way looks better right here and then I can add my waves as well with my pool party ink pad which has disappeared okay I need to look around I know I have it here somewhere okay it's underneath something I am absolutely sure about that oh there it is oh. That's what happens when you're working with too many boxes. Things start to go missing underneath the boxes. Okay, so now what we can do is just add a few little waves in here. I'm gonna use my original box as kind of a template. Once I have a design that I, I like, then I just kind of repeat that for everyone. I'm stamping off a bit. So normally I'd put a piece of scrap paper underneath there, but I'm kind of just being bold and um, Hoping most of it won't um, come down onto my surface. Okay, and I'm just adding a few more. Okay, that looks good. And then on the back side, I'm turning it, and then I'm just gonna add a few on here, like that, just to kind of complete the back of the tail. And then I'm going to take some stamp and blends. I'm going to take my Granny Apple Green Dark and I'm going to come in and I'm going to color my crocodile. Probably need my little bullet tip on this part. Maybe since I have my bullet tip out, I will do all the skinny little areas that might be harder to get with the brush tip. And do my little legs over here. And also, I'm gonna do the little, I'm not gonna do the teeth, because hopefully the crocodile's teeth are nice and white and bright for the dentist. Can you imagine being a crocodile dentist? That would be um, a tough job at the zoo, being a dentist for any animal. I can imagine. Probably done by the vet now that I think about it. Okay, so I've colored in that part and then I'll come in with my brush tip and fill the bigger spaces because it will be faster to do with the brush tip. Um, you can also use whatever coloring method you want for this. Um, you could also stamp this guy on, on green cardstock and cut him out. We don't have a die for him, but you could just go ahead and cut him out. Um, if I did that, um, I would, you know, fold him along that edge and, um, you know, um, have to wrap him around a little bit, right? But stamping on here, there's other ways. I have a quick method too where I just use a sponge dauber to color him. And it's not quite as bright as a stamp and blend, but um, it's kind of a quicker method. I can show that to you if you want. 
Hopefully my box over there is dry enough. I can show that to you real quick how I would do that. Okay, I'm coming along. Almost done. I would probably go in and do like a slightly better job than I'm doing right now because this is a big big area but I'm just trying to show you how I would color him I'm I would go over and do a little bit of shading with the crocodile too or you could do light um, granny apple green and then come in with the dark afterwards I'm gonna use my pumpkin pie dark and just hit the goldfish this is such a small area that even if I were going to use sponge daubers for the main part of the crocodile, I would use um, these Stampin' Blends for some of the tinier areas. Let me see. Granny Apple. Okay, so let me bring in my box. This one that I did. And test it, see if it's okay. I think it's not smudging anymore. And then let me grab so this for this technique, you would need your granny apple green ink pad and a sponge dauber and a scrap piece of paper. Okay, so for coloring with sponge daubers, I've got my little sponge dauber, stamp off a bit. And then I'm going to just kind of sponge along here. Yeah, it's still a little smudgy. You'd probably need to heat set this. So, but to get into the skinnier spaces, um, I just add a little um, on the side of my sponge dauber. And then I work along the side like this. Okay. So basically you can cover like this area much faster by coming around and, and doing that. And then in this one, you kind of come in and just do it on the sides. This one does tend to go outside the lines just a little bit, but it's kind of a fun, fun look as well. So you can see how I did that. If you wanted to afterwards, since it's really hard to get a sponge job, <clears throat> sponge job on the side, go in with your granny apple green blends and you could hit the little spines on here. You see what I mean? And you can fill those in with uh, a Stampin' Blend or um, just a regular um, marker just like that. And then I would still do the goldfish with my blends. But, you know, between the two, one of them is darker and one of them is lighter, but it's still a good look with sponge daubers. And if you have to do like 20 of these, you might wanna do the sponge daubers because it's gonna take you um, a lot less time than um, doing it with a, a Stampin' Blend. So just an alternative way to color. Okay, so we're moving along. We're making the box. I'm going to move some of these things out of the way so they're not in the way. Okay, so I've got my cover and now I'm going to fold it along the score line. I don't want to do that until I've finished coloring and I'm going to still decorate the bottom of this, but I can do that afterwards. We could do it before too. I'll show you how to do it before. Okay, so I've got my banners pick a punch. And I'm going to create a little banner for this front. So this piece is three and a quarter inches by three quarters of an inch. Three and a quarter by three quarters. And I'm going to put it in that middle slot of my banners. Pick a punch and punch one end. Stick it in again. Punch the other end. Come on out. And so that will be glued down here. My glue is a little slow this morning. Okay. It's slow and then it comes out fast. 
So then I can just add this centered on this bottom segment piece. Am I still on camera? Good. All right, and then next, I'm gonna create this right here. I wanna have this as a banner layer. So I'll just take, this is the Timeless Label Punch, and this is Pool Party Cardstock, and I'm just gonna punch a label. And then I'm going to add that. Come on. To the center. Of this piece. And then I'm going to take a piece of Whisper White and the Crocodile Kisses. I think that's cute. Crocodile kisses aren't romantic, right? They're just like fun. So crocodile kisses, and I'm just going to stamp this in the bottom corner of my piece. And I'm going to grab scissors and put everything out of reach. Okay, scissors. And I'm going to just freehand cut a rectangle. So I'll go first along crocodile because it's the biggest word and then I'm going to come down the side and then I'll line up with the kisses at the bottom and keep this in my camera and then I'll just do even on the other side so you can see I just cut that out and then I'll just put a little bit of Tombow on the back So theoretically, you can do everything while it's flat, and it makes it a little easier than doing it once it's assembled, the slider piece. Okay, then I tied a little Baker's Twine bow earlier. And if you have Baker's Twine, you can use Tombow to, to glue it on, or a mini glue dot. I'm going to use Tombow that's what I have right here so I'll just put a oh that's a big dot of glue no no I don't want that much glue make a tiny dot of glue tiny not big tiny dot and then you're going to stick your knot in the center of that glue and then you're gonna hold it down for five seconds one two three four five and then you can lift off and then it should stay there. Those little fibers are going to grab onto the glue and then they are going to hold it down. Okay, so now I'm going to fold this piece along the score lines. So let's do that. Uh, bone folder over here. All right, there are so many things in my way today. Okay, use my bone folder to fold this piece along the score lines. Okay, easier to fold when this is down like this. All right, so now you know you have to put glue on this opposite end and then this will come together. And I made these two ends the same size, so they're easy to nest together. I did that on purpose, because I had enough length that I could do that. I try and do logical things like that sometimes when I can. And then just glue those two edges together. You can also glue it while it's flat, too, like press it flat, because it can fold flat just like the other one. So just press on there. Make sure it has good adherence. Fold it the other way too. Okay, and then with some luck, this should fit inside snug as a bug in a rug. Here we go. So that is, that is how I do the little Box. and that's the difference between the two now I do want to show you how I did the kangaroo one in case you wanted to see um, 
see how to do this one. So um, I've got this piece the exact same measurements, except this is the big segment here. So when I stamped this kangaroo, I stamped him just a little bit below the score line. And then this little kanga at the bottom, the little roux, he's stamped completely on this end segment. Okay, so a little bit different than the crocodile. I just want to show you. So with the crocodile, you're stamping this segment here um, and, and the the third segment up. With the kanga, you're stamping on the first two segments, okay? All right, and then for this little guy, the difference is going to be, I'm gonna create a slightly different banner, and I wanna show you how I did that. So I wanna first punch a piece with a timeless banner, punch in Whisper White. And I'm going to take this um, hopping by just to say hi stamp and I'm going to stamp it down here at the bottom of this piece. Okay, so at the punch piece um, at the bottom. And then I'm going to put this, feed this in from the side right here, okay, uh, stamped goes in first, coming in from the side, and when it's in this window, I'm going to lift it up a little bit, kind of have a look, see if it's centered in a, in a, in a good looking way, you can shift it back and forth until you find that it looks good. And then you're going to punch it and that creates, see it just takes that little piece off and then you've got like a slightly smaller labely piece for that. And then, all right, I did have a piece of pool party here somewhere and it's walked. Oh, there it is. It went back there. All right, so I've cut a piece of pool party. Uh, to a three and a quarter inch width and it's about three inches long. The reason I made it three inches long, I'm going to actually cut it off um, up at the top, but if I make it too short, it's really hard to fit it in here and have it still have enough length to kind of use the guide. So I you want to cut it to at least about three inches long and then you're going to punch it. Okay, and then that creates that little banner and and then I'm going to adhere this onto here, but I want to cut it off just a little bit. So you kind of find your, your place where you want to put this. Okay. And then take a little pencil mark and just give yourself a little guide point um, where this um, creases, where the fold is. And then you can come in, you can use your scissors if you want to, but if you want a really straight cut, put it on your trimmer, line up your pencil line with the groove, and then cut it. And so now you've got a banner that will fit your space correctly. Okay. And then I'll just come in and adhere this I'm about three eighths of an inch from the end, maybe half an inch, somewhere around there. Eyeball it, see where it, where it looks good. I might shove it just a little bit more if it's if it wants to shove. It's a little too close to Kanga. All right. Okay. Then you're going to put a little tombow on the back of here and add this to the front. Okay, and then grab a, a, another bow. I made another bow out of Baker's twine and I used, we have um, the snail mail twine combo pack. It comes with the blushing bride twine and the white twine and I'm just using the white twine here 
And again, I'm just going to put a little tiny dot of glue and put my knot in there and hold it for five seconds. Two, three, four, five. Okay. So now two other things that I did for this little guy. Let me grab them here. So I stamped and die cut these pieces a little earlier. So um, this, of course, um, has the kangaroo dies that come with it. And um, so you can stamp the little hearts. They're in the kangaroo set. And this little heart is also in the kangaroo set. And I just stamped, colored them with uh, Stampin' Blends. Also the kangaroo, just so you know colors wise. Um, I used cinnamon cider light on the kangaroos, uh, both of them. And then I used a little petal pink on the ears. And then I'm just gonna adhere this and just the the little hands just look like they're holding the heart. So if you can center that right there, then the big kangaroo is holding a lot of hearts, but the baby kangaroo, and I think this is so cute, is holding one heart. And I think that's just really sweet. At first I just had the big kangaroo holding um, the hearts. And then I'm like, wow, there is a little heart in that set. And now little baby kangaroo can also hold a heart. I just think that's really cute. Okay, so this is already folded along all the score lines. So now I just need to put Tombow on this end. And bring this together. And like I said before, you can actually fold this flat once you have it in the right spot and then press down so that you get a good adhesion, good cover. And then fold, you can fold it back the other way too if you want. And there is your lid. And I did not make a second box for this, but I could grab, this is the box, the white box I made earlier. You could make a pool party box or a cinnamon cider box for inside of here, whatever color you want. But this is just my Whisper White box. So that's what it would look like if you did it in Whisper White. And it's snug, like it's not gonna fall out. And so it's not quite uh, like the food safe, love you always treat boxes, but it is a pretty close match. The sizing is the same. And um, so, okay, I don't have this one decorated up all the way, but this is the Love You Always treat box, just for reference down here at the bottom. Um, they're the same size, right? Basically. My box might be just a little bit bigger, 1 16th of an inch bigger, but basically, um, they're the same width, one and a half inches and everything. So that is just an option for you for making the boxes. And I hear a lot of binging coming over here. So I'm going to come over here and read some of your comments and see if you have questions or suggestions for me. Um, I also want to remind you that it is celebration going on right now. So it's a great time to order from Stampin' Up. Uh, Stampin' Up rewards you for every 50 or $100 you spend. So if you have a $3, $300 order, um, you, let me make that a little lower. Let's say you have a $100 order. You can either choose two level ones or two $50 choices or one $100 choice in the celebration catalog. And we have some great stamp sets um, and rewards in there in the celebration catalog. So, um, and if you order from me, you can choose one of my paid tutorials for free. And if you order $75 from me, I will send you, I will send you, where are they? The um, pastel pearls next month. And um, they will um, be coming into the mail to you mid-February. So, let me see if I talked about everything that I need to talk about before I look at all of your questions or comments. I think I covered everything. 
All right, let me go to the top. Good morning, Pat. And Vera Blue and Birgit, Birgit, Birgit from Germany. And Cindy and Janine. Hello, everyone. Oh, and Kay from the UK. And Shirley from Georgia. Um, wondering ideal for the sentiment. Thank you so very much for sharing. Well, thank you, Patty. Um, oh, I missed about where to order. Um, how did I miss these? Um, oh, a page 11 in the mini catalog. Yes, they are with the Valentine's um, things, but they make an appearance. Um, the sample here um, is on page 45 of the catalog. So, um, but the actual treat boxes, they are shown um, on, Cindy says on page 11. Um, they are with the Valentine's um, things. So, but they make really great, you can decorate them up however you want. Um, I really like cute animals, so I'm gonna be doing cute animals. But a lot of people wanna be more sophisticated and, and that is your choice. You can um, decorate them up however you want. And um, they're, they're great because you can just fold them together and they're, they're ready to go. Or if you wanna make mine from scratch, now you have, um, now you have the recipe to do so, right? Good morning, Connie from Denmark. Janine, if card crafting, this is uh, Janine's comment, if card crafting has taught me nothing else, it has taught me how to read a ruler. You are so right, Janine. I have become very proficient at reading a ruler, but I know some people, we finally get used to the 1 8 inch increments and then I have to throw a 1 16th in there and that can be a little bit more difficult and that's why I just took the time to, to show you um, um, where that is on the ruler because it can kind of mess with your brain a little bit. Um, Pat says both boxes are so darling but I think they would be great um, for your adult um, Friends. Granny Apple Green is the perfect color for the alligator. I think so too. What I like about Granny Apple Green is it's really bright. It's kind of, it's bright without being neon. It's a nice bright green and it catches your eye. Um, yeah, and you know what? If my son lived closer and it wouldn't take such a long time to ship anything that isn't flat in a letter format, I would be making him some treats for Valentine's Day. It just sucks with the whole border thing. The board, shipping something before the pandemic um, was expensive and now it's just expensive and long. Just long. <laughs> Crazy times. Okay, um, Janine says, I love that the croc is eating the goldfish. That just cracks me up. I know, I saw that sample in the catalog and I swear I bought those boxes just because and the stamp set just because of the crocodile eating the goldfish with a little goldfish put golden goldfish in there that it's just oh my gosh i just like that that is just too cute right yeah i i love it but i do i feel like it's a little bit cluttered up at the top with the um with the greeting just up on the top i mean it makes it for a good photo in that regard but i kind of like um I kind of like putting the um, the greeting on on the side a little bit. It kind of, you know, you're using all of the surfaces then, right? Because if you're looking at it just from the top, then it looks a little bare, but most of the time we're not looking at something straight on. So just being able to like put the um, banner down below and I love wrapping the tail to the back i think that is so cute you know it just kind of makes that box kind of continue on forever all right um hello esther from the uk good morning um let me see <laughs> cindy says brenda inspires me for my candy treat ideas i'm so glad that i'm inspiring you cindy that's awesome uh great as cindy says a housewarming candy treat cookies for ruth you know the, the boxes are are just a great i think you know 
these would also be good like for wedding favors too especially since they're they're food safe the um, the love you always treat boxes um great great way to like have a container to put stuff in um all right i think i went through all the comments i should just give you an idea of what the finished um box is so the love you always treat box is um about four inches long by two and three quarter inches wide by one and a half inches tall so four by two and three quarters by one and a half so that just kind of gives you an idea of what your finished product is and that's the same for my boxes as well and um, I hope this gives you a way to do those treat boxes from scratch I hope you'll give it a whirl and make sure you subscribe to my email list so that you can get this project sheet on Saturday with all the measurements all written down and a nice little photo up at the top and a supply list that you can keep or put it on your iPad so you can read it as you're, you know, recreating my tutorial. If you love my video tutorials, make sure you subscribe to my channel. You'll see my little floating image down in the corner of this video. If you click on that, you should be able to um, go to my subscribe section and you can hit subscribe. And then there's also a bell where you can choose how often to be notified. So make sure you do that. Um, one more comment. Um, oh, a couple more comments. Birgit is going to get the crocodile too. I think everyone should get the crocodile, but that's just me. I love animals. Um, Shirley says, I have the actual Stampin' Up! box and love the design and strengths. Um, thank you for showing how to make in order to use the colored cardstock. And also, down the road, when, when we can't order that box anymore, I'd like to still be able to use my stamps and create similar boxes. So this will give you the option to do that. It will give a longevity to the ideas that you used on the, um, the Love You Always Treat boxes. All right, guys, I hope you have a great weekend. I will be back next Tuesday with a Casing Tuesday card. That's when I give a card a, a makeover, a card out of the catalog and makeover. And we have a Facebook group for that, and you can join in. More information about that is on my blog, so you can click on over there and check things out. I have a complete supply list for this project over on my blog too, so um, click over there. And um, I always thank you so much for ordering for me. This is my full-time job, so um, when you uh, buy from me, you also support me and my business and my family, so I really appreciate that. Um, and then next Friday. I will be back here with another 3D project or a fancy fold. All right. I hope you have a great weekend and take care, everyone. Bye-bye.